I'm Kelly Blahakis Hanks, President and CEO of ECOS, and we're proud to sponsor the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walks. I lost my own mother to breast cancer and want to do everything I can to help fight this disease and support the women and men facing this diagnosis. The pandemic was a challenge for all of us, but we can't and won't allow progress to be put on hold. Your support of the American Cancer Society today will have a greater impact on their mission than ever before. Making Strides is, oh my God, it's amazing. If you've never gone to a Making Strides walk, just to go and see thousands and thousands of people walking, sharing, loving, caring. While you're walking, you meet so many people who are going through, who have gone through, and then who are walking in support of the fallen angels. It is just love. It's full of pink love. That's exactly what it is. I've been looking for information regarding breast cancer within African American women, and it's been challenging to find. We need to educate all women on breast cancer, on triple negative. The American Cancer Society recently put out research. They're talking about the African American community and how this disease is affecting the community and you know the different types of breast cancer. They're talking about that within this report. And so to see Making Strides is looking at me and seeing me too as the face of breast cancer is really important. Y el evento es muy divertido porque te da la oportunidad de, de caminar con tus amigos, conocer a otras amigas, a otras personas que han pasado por lo mismo que tú y, y es como un, un lugar de apoyo para todos. Hi everyone, bienvenidos. Thank you for joining the American Cancer Society as we officially kick off the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer movement for 2021. I'm Desiree Berenger carton with Your American Cancer Society and I'll be your host for today's program. For those longtime friends and supporters tuning in, we extend our deep appreciation for your years of support. And for those who are joining us for the very first time, welcome to the movement. The Making Strides family is a nationwide community of support and inspiration, and we are certain you will find yourselves right at home as we fight to end breast cancer together. So let us know in the chat if you are a new or returning supporter of Making Strides and where you are tuning in from today. We love to hear from the thousands of team leaders, participants, and survivors who rally with us in the fight. As you know, it's been quite a ride. After the last 18 months, we are so excited to be safely reuniting in person once again this fall. We hope you are so ecstatic as we are to join forces in communities across the country to fund the future of breast cancer research and programs. Later in the program, I will share a bit more about what you can expect at the walks this year. But if you want to be on the receiving end of the latest and greatest news and updates, please be sure to sign up for Making Strides at makingstrideswalk.org today. There's so much to share with you, but first, let's take a moment to celebrate some of our biggest supporters, like national presenting sponsor, Avon. Making strides has always been more than just a walk. It's a movement. And despite the many challenges brought on by the pandemic, this powerful crusade survived in 2020. Although last year's fight looked much different, this proud community's passion never wavered as we continued to battle breast cancer. The energy, creativity, and tenacity we saw in 2020 was nothing short of amazing. As the first ever national presenting sponsor of Making Strides Against Breast Cancer, 
Avon and LG h and are incredibly proud to be a part of this resilient community. As we celebrate our 135th anniversary in 2021, we are deeply committed to continuing our legacy of support for this cause. As the world begins to open up again, we look forward to this October, when we can all get together for this joyous and momentous occasion. Let's continue this movement in an even bigger way in 2021. Thank you, Avon, a true partner in the fight. Closer to home, we also enjoy the support of some really amazing corporate sponsors that demonstrate just what community support and leadership in the fight is all about. Thank you to every sponsor joining us this season, including Chevrolet and its dealer networks across the country. Take a look. Chevrolet's been very proud to be a part of the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer with the American Cancer Society. It's been something not only for Chevrolet as far as a corporate partner, but also our dealer body across the country. We like to say that Chevrolet is all about the best of America and the American spirit. And when you think about that in a situation like this, in an initiative and a cause like this, it pretty much touches everybody. So if you're gonna be involved in things like community and family, there's no better organization to be involved with than the American Cancer Society. If you've ever been to a Making Strides Against Breast Cancer event, you know the atmosphere is simply electric, so positive, upbeat, and full of love for breast cancer survivors and thrivers. If you are a breast cancer previvor, survivor, or thriver, make it known in the chat and let's show our love and support for these amazing women and men. And join us in thanking the Zeta Tau Alpha Sorority as our National Survivor Ambassador of Making Strides. Now I'd like you to meet Wanda, a survivor, a strider, and an amazing champion of the American Cancer Society. When I finally called my doctor, he told me that it was breast cancer. And that's when my life changed. I just wanted to know if I was gonna live. I didn't know, I was scared. I felt helpless. American Cancer Society changed all of that for me. When I survived this, I'm coming back and I'm volunteering, I'm helping out, and I wanna be involved. I walk with Making Strides. My main team is my family. When I went over to the American Cancer Society table, they gave me a banner that said Survivor. At first, I didn't think I deserved it because at the time when I first put it on, I was battling cancer. I, was, I still had breast cancer. And my son said, no, you're a survivor. You deserve that shirt. So wear with pride. At that moment, I forgot I had breast cancer. It's a good feeling to be around others and then you, it's like you're the star of the day because <laughs> you're a survivor and you're there to support others. Making strides, it gave me a sense of community. It just gave me courage. It gave me all the reasons to fight and help others, let them know there is a brighter day. I always tell myself that my scars, they're my battle scars, and I don't want to get rid of them because it's a constant reminder what I've been through and what I made it through. I just feel like I was given a second chance. I'm here today because of American Cancer Society. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Wanda. Such a great reminder that supporting the American Cancer Society, the number one nonprofit leader in the fight, means we can continue to be there during every step of the journey for both survivors and caregivers. Your fight is our fight, and we are in this together. Whether you come for the hope-filled cheers, the friendships and camaraderie, or the amazing celebration and show of support, you stay and return each year because of the difference we continue to make in the lives of women and men facing breast cancer. The Making Strides movement is fueling the work of the nation's nonprofit leader in the fight to end breast cancer. 
In recent months, the American Cancer Society welcomed Dr. Karen Knudsen, the first female CEO in our organization's more than 100-year history. We are so excited to continue the fight under Dr. Knudsen's leadership and have a special message from her to share with you all today. Hello, and thank you for tuning in today. I'm Dr. Karen Knudsen, CEO of Your American Cancer Society. Though I only recently joined ACS, I've been fighting cancer as a healthcare executive and oncology researcher for more than 30 years. Throughout my career, I've witnessed firsthand the progress being made in the fight against cancer and the opportunities we must embrace to help strengthen that fight. For example, the money a person makes, the color of their skin, their sexual orientation, gender identity, disability status, or where they live should not affect how they're impacted by breast cancer. Certain groups of people are disproportionately burdened by breast cancer and experience greater obstacles to prevention, screening, treatment, and survival because of systemic factors that are complex and go well beyond the obvious connection to cancer. These obstacles include structural racism, poverty, jobs with inadequate pay, low quality education and housing, and limited access to the healthcare system, quality care, and insurance coverage. Health equity is essential to our mission. It's what we believe in, and it's a moral imperative to achieve our vision of a world without cancer. Most importantly, we will all need to work together if we are to reduce breast cancer disparities. We need to listen to the experiences and views of people with breast cancer who are marginalized, their caregivers, their communities, and engage with them in every step of the way. Like all of you, I celebrate the more than 3.8 million breast cancer survivors in the U.S., as well as the survivors and thrivers joining this program today. Here at ACS, we are putting more than 100 years of experience to work through investments in breast cancer discovery and research, ensuring greater access to quality care, influencing public policy, and providing patient support. We have witnessed a 41% decline in the female breast cancer death rate since 1989. And as a recognized leader in breast cancer research, we have no intention of ever slowing down because the end of breast cancer begins with just that, research. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we did encounter a once in a generation crisis for research funding. It's more important than ever to rally, reunite, and raise funds for breast cancer research and programming in 2021. Together, we can protect and sustain that life-saving work. Science that helps us learn more about risk and prevention, unlocks better treatment options, discovery that paves the way for new advancements, and most importantly, research that affords more time for those counting on us to fight the disease just as boldly and courageously as they are each and every day. Rachel is just one of the many who are counting on us to unlock the next discovery. And this is her story. I had gone to the appointment by myself because I thought it was going to be something really straightforward. And it was not. And so I spent time just driving around Old City, Philadelphia, sobbing. One, because I had cancer, but two, because I knew this boy that I met at summer camp that I loved so much. Um, I was about to really destroy his life. And I also didn't know how I would go home and look in the faces of my children and tell them, you know, these eight and 10 year olds that our world had changed forever. We met with the oncologist for the first time, and she spent probably about 20 minutes explaining what a metastatic diagnosis was and you know, where in my body the cancer had spread. She wrote down for my type of breast cancer what the treatment options were and, and handed me a list. And it was a really short, finite list. The, air in the room and time kind of just froze as we sat there, you know, looking at what didn't feel like a lot of options. The cancer was incurable. I would be in treatment forever. After the silence passed for a little bit, then she said, you know, one treatment might work for six months to a year, and then you would move on to the next treatment 
on the list. And, you know, looking at this piece of paper, it was really a terrifying, sobering moment. And then my oncologist said, you know, but this is just the list for today. And there are people in labs working on new drugs. There are patients in clinical trials. There are drugs that are pending FDA approval. And the goal is that you will never get to the end of a list because we will keep adding new treatment options. Knowing that there were people who were you know, dedicating their whole lives to research so that I could have more time with my family um, was, was really just an amazing moment of, of humanity. Starting 2020 was not a terrible time to be a cancer patient. And then COVID hit. And suddenly, you know, I started hearing and reading that cancer research was really in jeopardy. You know, a one year pause in cancer research could mean a whole generation of cancer treatments that don't come to fruition. The first drug, that I was put on was actually based on research um, from 1985. In 1985, I was nine. It's really scary to think that the best and brightest ideas in how we could attack cancer might be sitting on a shelf in a lab somewhere uh, because there wasn't enough funding. It's so important to give to the American Cancer Society because the American Cancer Society is really where research begins for cancer treatments. You're really investing in that research that becomes the next cancer breakthrough. So knowing that this is a time that research is on hold, I would hate to think that we look back on 2020 as a time that you know, we were so affected by COVID and so focused on COVID that we really lost ground in the fight against cancer. I savor every single moment that I have um, with my husband and my children in a way that I never did before I heard the words cancer. You know, for my husband who, you know, we promised each other a future, you know, when we were 19, this future has been better than I ever could have pictured. To my children, I would say that, you know, everyone tells you there's so much anticipation when you're waiting for your child to be born and there's so much excitement. And that is the same anticipation I feel every single morning when you walk downstairs. It is the privilege of a lifetime to be your mother. Rachel, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. If that personal story doesn't inspire you to join us this fall, then I don't know what will. Speaking of the fall, as I mentioned earlier, we are reuniting in person. We are so excited to finally bring together our Making Strides community again and are making plans to ensure the event is not only memorable and fun, but also safe in accordance with CDC, state and local health and guidance and regulations. Obviously, this guidance will evolve in the weeks and months ahead, and we will continue to update our supporters about what to expect locally. Now, the best way to truly be in the know is to sign up online now for your local event to receive those local updates. We are committed to the health and safety of all of our participants and will make the best local decisions regarding masks, sanitizing stations, social distancing and crowd management, modified event layouts, and contactless activities. Because every Making Strides event is different, decisions will be made and adjusted based on the unique needs and circumstances of the local community. And if you aren't able to join us in person, it's okay. If you're not comfortable doing so at a public event, we will offer a unique personal experience to support the fight against breast cancer. So sign up at makingstrideswalk.org to begin learning more about those plans as well. We can't wait to rally together this fall. Now, as you heard from Dr. Knudsen, funding breast cancer research and new discoveries is so important to this fight and so is early detection. COVID-19 has had a profound impact on cancer screening across the United States. At the beginning of the pandemic, we saw cancer screening rates decrease by nearly 90% for breast, cervical, colorectal, and lung cancer. 
Obviously, what we do right now to combat the staggering declines in cancer screening rates since the start of the pandemic will have after effects for decades to come. That is why the American Cancer Society is working with our partners in health systems across the country to collaborate on a national initiative to return to and exceed pre-pandemic screening rates. Let's all do our part. If you haven't already, please make a plan today to talk to your doctor and ensure you are up to date on your recommended breast cancer screening and encourage your friends and family to do the same. I just had mine. It is so important. It is so safe to return to the screening now, and we know that early detection saves lives. Removing any barriers to screening is also critical to our work of saving lives from breast cancer. And Dr. Evelyn Rodriguez is on the front lines of that work. Let's learn more. Everyone definitely deserves access to care. We should all be able to get the care we need, when we need it, how we need it. There's a lot of barriers that the women in our community are facing uh, in order for them to come in to, for care. One, of course, is always the financial issues. Some of our women don't have the insurance uh, to come in. And even though we have the Cancer Screening Project providing free care for these women to get their mammography, their uh, uh, pap smears, their colorectal screening, and for men, prostate screenings in a timely manner, they're still not coming in. Through the American Cancer Society, we currently have a grant uh, working with some of our community partners. Uh, what we're trying to do with that grant is assess what are some of the healthcare system barriers, some of the community barriers, some of the barriers that our patients just face trying to get into the system that are preventing our women from getting the care that they need. Some of the barriers are transportation. They don't have the means to get to their appointments, and they don't know about the resources that are available to them so that they can access transportation. We also have um, some of our women who just have other competing priorities. Is there enough opportunities for them to come in at a time that's convenient to them, that there's no childcare issues? There's fear about getting the mammogram, that it hurts. There's fear about what their results will find. There's fears if there's a positive finding, what next? So you have to also address the education piece in order to pass by those barriers of fear. Can we put in place uh, some of the resources so that care can be achieved, no matter what their ethnicity, no matter what their income, no matter what their socioeconomic status, making sure that we get rid of any other barriers and provide all the resources necessary so everyone can get the care they need. Without funds for these free screenings, um, for these free follow-up care. A lot of women from minority communities who don't have insurance, who maybe have insurance but are not educated about their screenings, we would lose a lot of those women to cancer. So these grants from the American Cancer Society are critical to make sure that every woman is getting equitable care, is getting equitable education, and is able to access the healthcare system in a timely manner. I feel that the work that we're doing in the community are definitely making a huge impact in getting women in for care. And that's who I want to work with. I want to work with people who I can make an impact, but who deserve the same care as anyone else out there. Just like the support programs and the research highlighted in our earlier stories and the national push to increase breast cancer screening rates again, the Making Strides movement also allows us to continue to work with leaders like Dr. Rodriguez to help break down screening and treatment barriers for all those fighting breast cancer. Together, we are doing so much good. So are you ready to come together again and fund the future of breast cancer research and programs? The Making Strides season launches today, so sign up now and kickstart your fundraising. Once you sign up, you will learn more about an exclusive fundraising challenge that will earn you your choice of new Making Strides swag. So don't wait, we all want swag. Now is the time to join forces with the nonprofit leader in the fight to end breast cancer. Rally with us, fundraise with us, make strides with the American Cancer Society as we reunite again this fall. Your fight is our fight. Here we are, 
all dressed in pink with our game faces on. In a world recovering from a year like no other, still fighting to defeat breast cancer. We haven't allowed our fight to be sidelined. And now we're ready to reunite and come together as a community once again. We'll round and we'll fundraise. Coming back louder and stronger than ever to fund the future of the breast cancer fight. Raising money to fund new research, providing 24-7 support for cancer patients, and giving access to life-saving screenings. So let's join forces. Rally with us. Fundraise with us. The future is a world free from breast cancer. And that future is in our hands. Your fight is our fight. <laughs>